I wanted to share my most favorite class I ever created with you. The reason why it is a study in artist development and it fills these three notebooks. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of content. Right now through April 8th, I'm running a sale on the course. It is 24 months of comprehensive design, idea, color, sketching, composition, to actually painting and giving you a finished product. You have 24 months of that. So I wanna show you what's inside one of these. So they are all, look how packed they are. I love this book. <laughs> these are all done in a Dilutions Creative Journal by Ranger. This one is eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Now it has mixed media paper, but it's nice thick paper. It is great for mixed media. I used acrylics on here. I've used wax on here. I've used different textures. I've used pencil and pens and markers, everything in there. I didn't use any watercolor in this one. So let me show you what one month looks like. When you open the book of the delusions, there's a pocket here, a really nice size pocket. And then the book starts like this. So it has a nice, binding here. It lays flat. You can see you just open it and it lays totally flat, which I love. This is some graphite, so you can see that it works really well with graphite. In here, each of the lessons is, I made a little tab for it. <laughs> so the first lesson here is called the yellow sweater. So it's based on a doll that I had. Now, the idea here is that I am showing you something that I have because this is the, the way that I teach, but I am encouraging you to see this for more than a doll. So maybe you don't do dolls, but what do you do? Say you do, let's just say birds. So instead of looking at it as a sweater doll, how would you turn this into a bird for yourself? This is about development of your skills and your ideas and starting to learn differently. So in here, I want you to write down as much stuff as you can. So this was about the sweater doll. So on this page, I kind of wrote what the sweater doll meant to me. You know, she was soft, she was fluffy. Her sweater is here, it's, it's knitted. It's just a little bitty doll. She was really about that size. But I liked her details, like her bow here, I drew really big so that I would understand the construction of it. She had a little flower on her sweater. So again, I drew it big here. She had a button on her hat, I drew it big here. I drew the cable stitches. So you can see here, here's the bow, here's the little flower, here's the button, and then over here is how I saw the cable on the sweater. Now I'm putting in all those details so that when I come to paint, I'll know what it looks like in my mind and how I've kind of broken down the details so that I can see them. I do this a lot in my work. If there's a detail that I want to capture when I paint, I will just do a little bitty swatch like that so that I remember. Then we talked about color and value and how to make something darker and lighter all throughout. Each lesson has a specific curriculum that we follow all throughout the artist notebook. Since this was our first one, I talked a little about adding white to make tints, adding black to make shades, adding different colors to see what is your dark color. Like I love charcoal gray and acrylics instead of black. And so that's what I use for mine. Mixing with complementary colors, mixing with colors that are next to one another on the color wheel. So color is a very important thing with that. And you can see here, I kind of painted her loosely in the journal. And you can see all the details that I made note of. I've got her painted here. I've got the button that was important. This knot was important. This little structure on the flower was important. And you can see now it looks all sweatery. <laughs> and then from there, sketchbook to easel. So what, what that means is what kind of ideas can you put her in? Think of a still life or how you would want to paint her. Would you just want it by yourself, by itself? Or would you want it with other things? You know, I wanted it with other things. I wanted it to be more than just a soft item. I wanted to add some hard 
kind of man items like binoculars here. I love that, you know, there was plants here. I like the ephemera here. So that's what all this is about. And it's called Sketchbook to Easel Idea Boards. And I just used magazines for this just because I have a ton of magazines that I like to cut up and save images. So that's how I was able to do this. So you don't have images like this, creating a pin book Pinterest board for yourself to use for this course would be fabulous so that it's all in one place. Then from there we went into exploring design with it and this was a supposed to be a photo of the finished piece which I never got around to pasting it in here. So let's go into the next one which was Bailey's teacup. I don't know if you've ever seen these but I found one at the antique store and I was really intrigued by the face. So here I'm showing you the front side. Here's the side where it comes in. Here's where the face is. Here's a close-up of the face. There was a little word yum on the inside which looks like this. <laughs> the Bailey label above the eye looks like this. So see the yum there and see the bailey. So this is what it actually looked like so that I would remember. Again, what would you put here? What kind of things would you have it explore for yourself? Do you like cups? Do you like a teacup? I'm not a tea drinker, but I absolutely fell in love with the cup because of the face on it and how it gave really nice dimension on the side of the cup. So then we explored color. Every month we explored five colors. And in this book, I was exploring the Sherwin-Williams color palette. So I was able to pick this up at the Sherwin-Williams store for like $10. And if you take this class, I believe this is still available, um, but there's a specific item number and stuff like that. If not, just use palettes colors that you have. You get PDFs with these colors in them so that you can recreate them if you didn't buy the book. And I talk about mixing colors and just what colors you have that are close to those. You know, go to your palette and try to mix those for yourself. And that's what these are. And then from there, it was, I wanted to see how I could make it look older. So I tried with crackle mediums. And that's the great thing about a journal like this is you can try all these mixed media elements and you can test them on what paper here that you're working on. Like if I was going to do crackle, say my finished piece is gonna be on a wood board, then I would wanna know what the wood looked like with the crackle medium. But this way I was able to play with it and it's in my journal in this place and I wrote just playing with crackle medium. Here I wanted it to look like old wallpaper. So I actually decoupaged a piece of an old recipe card and then I painted down over it and then I did the teacup to see how bright I could get it because I wanted it to feel dirty and more vintage. You'll see what I did with it at the end here. And then through here, I want you to think outside the box constantly. Like what do you see putting a teacup in? What kind of setting besides the normal thing of you know, some tea and maybe some sandwiches, right? Or tea and a table setting. What would you do to make it your personality? Would you have it out in the woods? Would you have it sitting on a stump? What kind of table setting would it be on? Would it be a Victorian one, a feminine one, a um, granite piece? Would it be, you know, on steel, right? So think about what individuality you have because that's what this course is about is this course is about bringing out what's inside of you so that your piece feels more like you and in here I talk about you know it's too pretty I love the face it's nice and heavy you know but how do I want to change it those are the kind of things and here I've made little sketches along the way I really like the idea of an old piece of wallpaper but I also like the idea of taking it into the woods and making it dirty like it was a hidden treasure that someone had dug up. And I thought that was really cool. So I explore all this, grunge it up, natural, organic, um, today's style, that kind of stuff. And then sketchbook to easel idea boards, I just went through my magazine pictures again and I was working with different colorways and textures that I saw. Like this was fabric because I was thinking if I did a tablescape, I would want to have some folding fabric and I would want them to be striped and not just something plain. So I was 
found this. This, I love the idea of the texture of the nest and roots and things like that because remember, I wanted it kind of buried in dirt. And then I like the masculine little element here. So it's just a masculine guy, but I thought this would be really kind of cool standing next to the teacup. And here's just another uh, pillow with more fabric. So you can see that it's expanding and it's not just limiting us into one little belief that it's a teacup and it's meant to sit on a table. So then as I was exploring grunge setups, I was thinking to myself, like what color combinations would I like for grunge? You know, I was actually thinking about if I buried it in dirt or if I had it being discovered maybe like in an old dusty attic, right? So think about opening a box and discovering this piece. What would that look like? So I was really in the blacks and browns, as you can see here. I love this coloration, but I also liked this where it was cooked stew pot, right? Just of apples, but I like that deep red in there next to this, and I like the natural elements a lot in there. So you see all those colors? Isn't that a nice palette? So that's what I mean. The color palette is there just as a jumping off point, but if you find something like this that inspires you, go for it. And this is what I actually painted. So I actually took this teacup out to our pond. We have a pond and I stuck it in the roots by the water and I threw some dirt in it inside it, dirtied it up, you know, actually smeared some mud around it because that's how I envisioned it being found and discovered. In my head it was broken, but I didn't break it. I left it on one. But what I really liked about this piece was the shadows here, how they gave me that green. Remember this coloration here? of this kind of green gray. I fell in love with that coloration. And you can see it here on the outside and inside the glass. And in each of these, I do paint this piece with you. Whether you do it or not, that's totally up to you, but it's a painting demonstration on how I create things throughout this course. So this entire book is done like that. So each thing, here I wrote a list of what we study. We pick a subject, then you write your initial thoughts, then you do some drawing or some details, something that intrigued you about the element. And then we explored color. Then it was about thinking outside the box and thumbnails and how you could create it to fit what you are suited for, whether it's like outside, inside, still life, realism, abstract, however you see that for yourself. Then gather sketch practice, which is me gathering all of those magazines. And then sketchbook to easel, which is our ideas and our thumbnails and working it out, getting it ready to paint it. And then we go to the easel to actually paint it. And inside these three lessons, there are 24 lessons. I mean, 24 individual lessons in here. And I can tell you that each lesson every month, because this was done on a monthly basis, each lesson takes three to five hours, so it is packed full of content. If this is something that you want to do is further your artist development, you will gain so much knowledge in here by the questions that I'm asking you because it is probing into your mind. What do you see? See beyond the object. So like this is a napkin ring, but what else could you do with it? I mean, see beyond this, right? So how would you make this into something in your style? Where would you put it? What would you add to it? Would you put something behind it? Would you put something through it? Would you cover this totally? You know, would you make it more realistic? Would you make it a real bird? How would you change this to fit your style? That is what my prompts inside of the artist notebook are getting you to think about. Throughout here also, there are several studies. So every three months we did a study on, uh, I have an art of paper collage where we worked with paper collage. So here we were just exploring the designs of paper and what you could do with it and how you could explore it. So here I taught you how to use little lines of it. Here we ripped pages. Here I talked about design and moving this little guy around until the focal point to see what you liked. Playing with papers, like these were just scrapbook papers that I had in different textures. 
and then here I used magazines to rip up and then I actually created this piece with these magazine pieces. So you can see this was my idea. It was an actual photo that I took of an item that I absolutely loved, which was just a billiard ball and a paper crane, but then I recreated it in the art of paper collage. See how cool that was? Hmm. And you get to see me work all that. But we also studied, uh, let's see here. We studied the art of Claude Monet. We studied the art of William Morris. We studied the art of abstract. We studied the art of Beatrix Potter. We also studied the art of cold wax. So we played with cold wax over acrylics, under acrylics to see what, what different areas there were. There is just so much in here and I wanted to just share with you the books upon books upon books of different things. A necklace, what is your favorite piece, your favorite necklace, and what could you do with it? These are some of mine, I love them. It's just page after page after page of inspiration and color and exploring color and getting to know yourself and asking what matters to you. You know, if you were to do a flower, what, what would your flower piece look like? You know, would you keep it soft? Would you keep it exciting? Would you add a lot of natural things to it? You know, here was what I did with it. So this is just volume one. There's two more volumes, you guys. Look at all of the chapters here. I've got all the little tabs. So in this class, you're getting three full volumes. Like I said, 24 months of self-discovery for artist development. And I just wanted to show you the details of what you will be getting because it is a packed course full of invaluable insights into who you are, what is your style, how can you develop it, what matters to you, medium doesn't matter. It's about diving in, digging deep into your heart and soul, and pulling out the items and elements that matter the most to you to create with. All of the information for the Artist Notebook is down below in the video description box. I would love to have you join me on this incredible journey into your own self. If you are inspired by today's content, please like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks for watching.